Hello and welcome back to this course. My name is Sijish and this video I will show you how to access ADLS container from Databricks using service principle. So here we are using Azure AD service principle also called as Microsoft Entra ID service principle. So instead of using credential pass through or any other option. So here we are using a separate service principle by using that service principle we are going to connect and access read or write ADLS container. So as per the Databricks recommendation, so this method is uh, not recommended. However, I just wanted to show you this option is available and if you are not using Unity Catalog, yes, you can try this option. Otherwise, use the Unity Catalog external credential or external location. So we'll go to the demo. First step is uh, create an ADLS storage account. So go to the resource group where you want to place your resources. So make it to locally redundant and uh, choose the standard uh, tier and here you have to choose this enable hierarchical namespace so that's it the networking uh, we are leaving as default data protection also we can leave it as default encryption uh, and tag also we will leave it. So once it's uh, validated, so it do some basic uh, validation and once it's uh, validated and success, we can create. So let it do it in the backend and the same time, uh, let's just uh, open an another window and create a service principle. So go to this uh, Azure, then search for uh, Intra ID. So that is Microsoft Entra ID. So earlier we used to uh, use this as Microsoft AAD, Azure AD. Okay. So go to the Entra ID. So where you have this uh, directory uh, managing option. So go to this manage uh, option and you can see there is something called app registration. So this is the place where we are going to create a new service principle. Go ahead and create a new registration and the name db hyphen sorry that dbx hyphen ads sp01 so you can use uh, the name which suits your need or uh, your convention and uh, this is how your account uh, uh, or service principle looks like so the, it's a uh, in this organization that is fine and uh, the remaining re default uh, uri this is all not relevant in this case and go ahead and register okay so once this is created make a note of this entries like the client id object id and directory id so we may need uh, this uh, during our configuration okay so app id or app or client id so this is we need then object ID we may not need so tenant ID so what is the tenant ID so this is our tenant ID so we can make a note of this the next step uh, we need to create some credential for this uh, service principle okay so you can go to this manage then certificate and secrets so create a new client secret then uh, we will write it as training and how many uh, days you want it to or it's basically the expiry time it's so by default uh, six months you can increase or decrease or, or custom so this is uh, the various options available 
and uh, after that you may have to um, reset this credential let, let me just uh, take it for three months anyway i'm going to delete this soon so this is uh, my password okay the secret value you need to so you have to keep this value in the safe place because if you are compromising this you are uh, uh, I mean anyone uh, who can access this will be able to access via this password okay so this is basically the password associated with this service principle so this is the service principle name okay just uh, right so now uh, we'll go ahead and uh, assign the permission so this is the resource or ADLS uh, storage account or that we have created so we will uh, give the storage contributor access so you can do it at the container level or at the storage account level itself so let me just uh, do this permission and uh, if i want only the reader access yes storage blob a reader is enough but if i want to write it back to this uh, storage account containers then i need a storage blob contributor so let's type this storage blob data contributor okay so you can see the reader owner and the contributor so let me just uh, take this contributor since i need write permission also and members uh, the default is user group or service principle yes select that member so in our case the member is something like this service principle just to try search with this name okay and uh, select so if you have not assigned this maybe during uh, when you do um, connect and use this you will get an error so review and assign right so now let's go to the databricks workspace and uh, try to uh, connect uh, this ADLS so go to the compute and make sure your cluster is up and running go to the workspace and uh, the workspace and uh, go to your directory and uh, create sorry create a um, um, notebook okay so let me just uh, create a simple notebook for connecting to ADLS container and uh, that notebook you can attach with your uh, cluster okay so let's just go ahead and attach this with the cluster and uh, this notebook you can rename it to ADLS connect or whatever okay so this is our ADLS um, storage account and let's just go ahead and create a new container so let me just name it as training okay okay so this is my container name and uh, we have already collected certain values just uh, make a note of those value so training at so this endpoint you can get from the settings and endpoints check this ADLS endpoint okay so this is abfss colon slash slash so this is your uh, storage container endpoint and you can load some file some sample file to this container and uh, that file values you can read so let's let me just uh, do that for our testing so just uh, upload something or just uh, create a sample directory demo mm -hmm. and uh, inside that demo directory i'm going to upload some sample files okay let me just uh, download the file okay i have a movie file the sample file which i use for the demo i let me just uh, upload it so the location is something like uh, the, under the training okay so training is a container inside that uh, we have a folder called demo and inside that uh, we have some files okay so this is the location so how to access it again the data bricks official documentation has that uh, detailed step on how to connect it okay so this is uh, a page and uh, i will be adding this in the description and uh, the detailed descriptions is, are available and here it's using the key vault um, 
and for storing the keys but let's just uh, use that without this key vault and scope maybe i will show you that in the next video how to create that so let's copy this code snippet and uh, add it here okay so let's just uh, paste that here so service credential so this is the credential or the password again this is not recommended to hard code the password but uh, let's just uh, do it for the ease of our demonstration just this is the password for that service principle just uh, write it here and uh, the storage account name so we have to replace all these things with the storage account name so what is the name of the storage account so this one we have to use it and uh, write it across this okay so here 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 and here that's it all right then um, application id so this is the client id we need to place it so what is the application id yeah client id so So we'll use that and uh, service credential is there here the directory id what is the directory id so that is also we have noted down so the tenant id which is same as the directory id just to copy that then add it here okay so we are basically setting some uh, spark configuration here let's go ahead and uh, execute again one more thing so this is not recommended to hard code any credential but it's better to use uh, some uh, secure mechanism that we will be discussing later okay so this is executed once this is executed then uh, we can just uh, try this uh, db utils commands to access this and see whether we are able to uh, do that okay dbutils.fs.ls and use this location okay yes this is listed movie csv you can see that so that means you are able to read this csv file and you should be able to write something to this uh, container location uh, i can just use dbutils.fs.mkda uh, or something right and uh, under this location somewhere you can just uh, see uh, dummy 01 and uh, so this will write something on that location and we can ensure so we have a uh, right access yes this is true and uh, if i go to this storage account and uh, if you just go here you can see dummy 01 is created so this way okay so this is the one way of connecting storage container and uh, read or write uh, using this spark concept here we used service principle and it's a password so we will be uh, uh, discussing about the scope in detail so where we use that scope for securing this part i hope this is clear thank you for watching this video we will see in the next video bye